Do you want to check out IT Pro TV but aren't ready to commit? We're making a few episodes from our most popular courses free for you to try here on YouTube so you can see what they're all about. Enjoy this episode and head over to itpro.tv when you're ready to see the full course. Welcome to the Accelerated CISSP series here at IT Pro TV. And what a way to kick this series off with is talking about ethics, right? Morality, right and wrong. What should or should we not do and how should or should we not do it? And we need to understand this not only for the exam, but it's kind of helpful in real life land so that you play nicely with others and everybody gets along just fine. But it does kind of beg the question almost philosophically, Adam, why do we need a code of ethics? So, you know, it's a great question, right, that Daniel's asking us to consider because when we think about having a code of ethics and let's just broaden our conversation thought process for a minute. Let's not just be mired in the CBK, the common body of knowledge, the domain we're in, security and risk management. Let's just think broadly about what ethics represent for just a moment, which is, as Daniel suggested, you know, really our moral compass, right? Kind of our guiding set of principles as individuals, perhaps collectively, in some sort of organization, in the business that any and all of us would be associated with, in our community, if you will. And ethics really represent the things that we should be thinking about and focused on as points that we want to essentially guide our behavior via or be governed by, if you will. High level statements of intent and purpose that help us to philosophically, a word Daniel used, I like a lot, I think it's a great way to think about this, to philosophically understand and frame the conversation we need to have with ourselves and with others in our community that allow us to share a common set of thoughts and purposes, goals, requirements, if you will, behaviors driven towards those, really creating culture. And specifically, in this case, the culture of security that you're gonna hear me and Daniel talk a lot about throughout our episodes across all eight of the domains that make up the CISSP CBK. And as we think about the culture of security in and among the organizations that we are members of, Ethics should play a part in that conversation and ultimately should be at the heart of what we do. Now, broadly and widely, answering Daniel's question, ethics help us to govern ourselves and act according to societal norms and requirements, right, that we have to all fulfill as being good members of our group, our tribe, right, our community. But when we think about ethics, it's not just about how we act. It is certainly about that, right? We have to do those things, but it's not just about that. It's also about how we think and how we interact with others and how we see them. And ethics really overall governs and should govern our behavior based on societal norms and statements of intent and statements of purpose that we all believe in and therefore should adhere to, if at all possible. All right. Well, the good people at ISC Squared have devised their own code of ethics that we need to be aware of for a CISSP. So could you explain what that is so that we can be prepared for that? Absolutely. You know, when we think about the ISC Squared code of ethics, so join me here on the screen, by the way, while we're talking. One of the things you're going to see us do throughout our time together across all the episodes across our entire course is I'm going to have a document up as we're going to build uh, the outline elements on this document through every episode. It is our key points document. You'll have one for each of the domains as we go through them. It'll be part of the course notes overall and will be associated with uh, the download that you can get from the overview episode or from any and all of the different episodes. We put our notes together. This document's going to list all of the high level elements associated with each domain as we go through it. So it's going to help to guide us, keep us oriented. We're dealing with code of ethics here, so I put it as the number one element. As we go through additional episodes, you'll see we'll add stuff to it. But always be on the lookout for this and make sure you grab it. It's going to give you a set of cliff notes, a set of bulleted items to study by for each domain. It's going to focus you in on the most important elements. And then the detailed notes by episode are going to help you to then flesh out those conversations Dan and I are having with you. So very important set of tools, right, that we're going to give you to be successful as you ultimately look to take and pass the CISSP exam. So the code of ethics that ISC Squared puts out for us, super, super, super important. Let me tell you why. The only thing that anybody who takes any ISC Squared exam, whether they pass or fail, that they actually can tell you about under the current NDA is the fact that ISC Squared is going to ask you at least one, perhaps more than one question on the code of ethics on every exam. ISC Squared makes this unequivocal in their statements publicly. They make it well known that the code of ethics is a requirement of certification. 
You take and pass any of the exams. You are not automatically granted the credential. You are then invited to apply for that credential. And part of applying is that you have to adhere to, accept, sign off on, and agree to be bound by the IAC Squared Code of Ethics. As a member of our community, the IAC Squared Certified Family Globally, you have to uphold this code of ethics. So they take it very seriously. I do, as a standing member in good standing of our community, have been for a very long time, and any and all of you that want to join our community and join this family have to abide by this code of ethics as well. I'm going to take you out to the website in just a second, show you where you can find it. I've put the URL for the website where the code of ethics is listed in the course notes, specifically in the episode notes for this episode. Don't make the mistake of not paying attention to this. I have this conversation with students all the time. Oh, you know, it's important, right? Mm -hmm. Code of ethics, got to talk about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, I'll pay attention to it, Adam. And then they blow it off, they don't study it. And then, you know, look, if one question is the difference between passing and failing on this exam, boy, are you going to feel silly. <laughs> but it shouldn't be one question. But let me tell you, let me put it this way. Do you want to be that CISSP who is trying to defend the right to be given the certification and be the one who didn't get the code of ethics questions I, I correct? I the question to be something like, should you or should you not steal data? Oh, I should totally steal data, right? No. Oh, I should have read that code of ethics. Yeah. <laughs> but you should give me my credential because I belong wrong, being yeah. certified, right? All right, join me back here. Let's make sure you know where to go, what to do. Uh, on the ISC Squared website, right, Code of Ethics, very important. Now, you could search right over here in the right-hand side. You could search for Code of Ethics and find it. But as I suggested, I put the URL right there in the episode notes for you, www.isc2.org forward slash ethics, hashtag HTTPS, of course. And you'll be able to find this landing page. And you want to take note of here two areas. The ethical uh, complaint procedures are there. I'll speak briefly about that. You don't need to know them for the exam. It's just for the real world for you. And then also the actual code itself. Now let's just start with the code of ethics uh, complaints procedures. If for any reason somebody in our community has a suspicion that someone else is acting inappropriately, there is actually a formal process where you can lodge a complaint against that person. The ISC Square takes this incredibly seriously. They will investigate it if anything is found to actually be substantive in that complaint. They will then take whatever appropriate action that they feel uh, potentially is warranted by that. Anything? Thunderdome? What? Thunderdome? Thunderdome. <laughs> two, only two. Two enter, only one leaves, leaves right? right. <laughs> Absolutely, right? But what will happen more often than not, because it's normally not blood sport to the end, uh, although that would be interesting. I can see where that might actually, yeah, that, that would work. Um, but what will happen instead is that you may get a sanction. You may get a letter saying, hey, you know, clean up your act, kind of do this or else. You may actually get to, you know, essentially decertified and barred from holding and or additional taking of exams and additional gathering of certifications for life. This is very serious stuff, and you want to make sure you're aware of that. It's incredibly rare that there is a code of ethics violation that rises to that level, but it can happen. So I just want you to know that for the real world, right? But what you want to know for the exam is the code, which you can see right here, all information security professionals who are certified by ISC Squared recognize that certification is a privilege, and it is, let me be clear, that must both be earned and maintained. And you want to know that. There are things like CPEs, continuing professional education credits, you'll be responsible for every year you maintain your certification. You have to do a variety of things in order to be in good standing. In support of this principle, all ISC Squared members are required to commit to fully supporting this code of ethics called the code. ISC Squared members who intentionally and or knowingly violate any provision of this code will be subject to action, action by a peer review panel, which may result in revocation of certification as well as any other things that may go on. So they kind of tell you what I just mentioned about that there. There are only four mandatory canons or elements that make up the code. Below the preamble is where the canons are. By necessity, it says, such high-level guidance is not intended to be a substitute for ethical judgment of the professional, meaning you should definitely pay attention to what we say here, but common sense rules the day, right? When we say safeguard life, do no harm, that can mean a lot of things in a given situation. What it ultimately means is going to be what you have to figure out, given the parameters of the context and the situation you find yourself in. What it doesn't mean is that given a choice between saving data 
and saving a human that you have to stop and consider which one you should actually do. It means you should save the human, right? Even though you may not like them, save them anyway, because that is what is important. So what they're saying here is, you know, live by the code, be bound by it, understand it, apply it contextually within the framework of what's going on, but use common sense and in general, just be a good person. The Code of Ethics preamble is self-explanatory. It's right here, safety and welfare of society and the common good, duty to our principles and to each other. Requires that we adhere to and be seen to adhere to at all times the highest ethical standards of behavior. Meaning just because nobody is watching doesn't mean it's okay not to act ethically. And keep that in mind when you're answering questions, right? Very important. Especially when nobody's watching. That's the time where people that are ethical do the right thing. Therefore, strict adherence to this code is a condition of certification. It's right there, right on the page. You violate the code, you're no longer certified or potentially run the risk of no longer being certified. The Code of Ethics Canons, four of them here, yes, you need to know them. No, you do not need to know them in order, but yes, you do need to know them for the exam. Protecting society, the common good, necessary public trust and confidence, and the infrastructure. All the stuff that's racked and stacked behind me here in our data center, all the stuff in your data center, all the stuff in the cloud and everywhere else, right? All of it. Act honorably, honestly, justly, responsibly, and legally. That is important. Provide diligent and competent service to principals, advance and protect the profession. Make sure you go through this. Make sure you take the time. It may seem silly to you, but it is a fundamental important statement of your intent and your commitment to our community and our family as a certified member of the ISC Squared community globally, that you take this seriously and do the right thing. All right, so Daniel, the Code of Ethics from ISC Squared, that's what it is, that's why we need it, and that is what you need to know about this for the exam. Well, it's very straightforward. It seems reasonable to me, and anybody that wants to live in any polite society, whether it be a real polite society or a technological one, needs to abide by some sort of code. We do thank the ISC, ISC Squared for coming up with this code of ethics to help guide us in our procedures as we work throughout our days. Make sure that we stay on the straight and narrow path. That being said, this is the end of this episode. Obviously, there is much more to come in our series, so be sure to join us there. Until then, though, have yourself a wonderful day. See you soon, everybody. Take care. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.